Hello everybody, what's Gucci, and it's AJ back again, and today I wanted to be talking about Malik, which is dynamic memory allocation in C. Now before, what we have learned is what is called static declarations, which is you know what the size of something is before, when you run it at runtime. So for instance, if I have an array, and I know the array is going to be size 10, I just declare it to be size 10. But what if I want to make an array of a structure or an integer or something like that? Because you can make arrays of structures that just store structures at every element as points to chars or something like that. You can you can't just have a number have a variable in here called i or whatever. You need to dynam you need to dynamically allocate it, which means at run you don't know wh how big your array is going to be at runtime. You need to base it off maybe input from someone or a calculation that would be different every time. So what you want to do is you want to use a, one of these functions called malloc. There also is realloc and another method that I will teach you guys in another tutorial. But malloc is the main method to know. What malloc does is it returns a pointer, which a void pointer, which can be turned into any type of pointer, which is very nice and can be used to again allocate an array or allocate just a structure. So what I want to point out before I begin this tutorial is that I have another include statement in this video, the include standard library. I'm running this in window, I'm running this in Windows Eclipse, and I do need for it do, it needs to run it needs to have access to this library, to this systems library to be able to run malloc. I just want to point that out instead of the standard SDIO. So right now I'm going to make an example here where I'm going to ask the user for an integer. And what this is going to do is oops, is it's just going to we're going to use this whatever they give us as an integer to declare an array. And I'm going to make a pointer here called IPTR. And now I'm going to use the magical malloc function I've just been talking about. So malloc, all it does is it takes in an integer. It takes in the size you want to return as a pointer. So if I want to turn an array, I want to return the size of whatever I'm doing times a certain number typically. So I'm going to use the keyword size of int times i. So what this will do is return, it will allocate memory of size int, which is four on my machine, but I use size of to make it more scalable. If I email it to my friend, I wouldn't have to worry about him running it. Times i, so it will return it will return it will allocate memory of size of five of i integers, which is very cool. And what it does is it returns a void pointer, which I could put a cast here. And what a cast does is it temporarily tries to turn turn an object into something that it was not if it can. And a void, a void pointer is very nice because it, be, it can be cast into anything depending on what you need. So, mal so you don't really have to worry about that. I don't need that function, but I can include it to be more uh, clear. And so now I have an array. And now I'm going to assign every position in the array. So j, j is less than i. J plus plus and yep and let's see I'm gonna use um, pointer bracket notation which may be new to you and but it's just the same as increment incrementing and decrementing in an array using a pointer and what it does is that I can access all the elements from a pointer just like I could access it from an array variable. And so I'm assigning every very I'm assigning each position to J. So zero will be zero, one will be position one will be equal will have a one in it. And let me print F, print all these statements out. So the value at percent D is percent D. And I'll do IPTR. J comma J and the last thing you need to do is that I allocated memory so I have taken a block of memory and said hey this is for the pointer 
But when I'm done with the pointer, I need to do something very important. I need to free it. I need to say, hey, I am not using this pointer anymore. So free IPTR. So you have to use a, mem a method called free. And what this does is it deallocates the memory. Why do you need to deallocate the memory or get rid of it? Well, in certain situations, in extreme situations, really, you can cause a memory leak where, let's say I run malloc a lot of times, eventually your computer could not have any more memory to allocate, and your computer would be out of memory, and there would be many errors of which we never want to mess with or touch and see. So you want to make sure, you do, whenever you use malloc, there's an accompanying free command. Also, what I like to do is I like to set up, I like to set the pointer to null. So it's not pointing to anything anymore. Because even though I freed this pointer, the pointer is still pointing to somewhere in memory. But since it's free now, it's not pointing to anywhere in mem it's it's pointing to some place some blank place some blank place in memory. But the pointer is still pointing to that basic location. So I like to set to null to know, hey, the pointer isn't turning anything and it's good practice. So when I run this program, nothing's here, but let me type in a integer first. Let me put this over here. And 12. And oopsie, I did not put a new line character. Let me run it again. Let me put in 10. And the value at 0 is 0. The value at 1 is 1. And as you can see from 0 through 9 in the array, which is what we want, I have values in the array, which is pretty cool. So I allocated an array using malloc, I assigned values to it, I freed it, and then I declared the pointer to the null. I can still use the pointer, I would just need to either assign it statically or use malloc again, which is pretty cool. So again, the summary of the store is malloc takes in a variable, takes in a number, and declares and returns a pointer of those of the size of the bits that you have entered in. So in this case, size of integers times i, so i integers, so an array. But I can do the same thing. I could type, I could do the size in whatever structure you may have, struct, cowboy, or something, or something of that sort. So malloc is very powerful in C, and definitely make sure you play around with it. I will have, um, I have a malloc example on GitHub, and that's all for today, guys. I hope you have a great day.